Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and this is the handover of an Auto Trail Tribute F70. To start on the walk round on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your mains connection point. So for charging your electric battery, should you be at home and you're pre-charging it before you trip away, or you are on site and you want to use 230 volt because you've paid your side fee, you get your hookup lead, lift the collar and expose the connection, lift the wheel flap on the van and then slide it on and connect and hook the vehicle up. Hook the vehicle first, then the power source so that you're not walking around with the live lead in your hand. And then underneath here you've got a grey waste water tap. So this is any water that you've put down a plug hole goes into a separate holding tank and you'd simply drive over the grid, the grey water waste point on the way out of your site and release the water as you don't want to take the water home with you because after all it is going to impact your payload so you just open that up, drain that off and you want to make sure that this is fully drained off in the winter so that no water can freeze in here when we are experiencing colder temperatures. Next to it, underneath you do have the blue one, this is fresh water drain, so if you've taken on contaminated water, you're not using the van for a couple of weeks or you winterise in, you do exactly the same and you would just allow the water out of the vehicle so that no water has the chance to potentially freeze in the vehicle. To fill the water, underneath this flap, Carry yourself a hose pipe and the hose, some hose pipe connections and put the flat end of the hose between here and fill until it overflows or until you're happy there is enough water on board which you can't see on the main control panel and it is lockable by the small key so it's a lockable cap. LPG so liquid petroleum gas this is the gas locker and all the external locks open with a habitation key. And in here you can fit two six kilogram gas bottles. So this is our test bottle that we've got on at the moment. So once you get a bottle on board, you use the straps and you'd strap the bottle in. So you'd put the bottle like that, strap it in using the straps and then to connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's a left hand thread with a being gas and all you need to do is hand tighten the pigtail, the black collar here and then turn the cylinder on and off from the top of the bottle ensuring that you do turn it off before you do start travelling and then should one bottle go empty you've got a spare bottle behind so you just attach the pigtail to the bottle behind and replenish the bottle that's empty. Two fridge vents and then at the back of the vehicle you do have a bit of storage in the garage so this is just under your rear beds so you've got your carpets in there and then on the other side you do have your toolkit for your Ford Transit and some storage shelves and on the back of the vehicle you've got your high level brake light and your reverse camera followed by your two full bike rack bars so this is where a bike rack can be fitted to the vehicle it's been strengthened in the back panel to take the added weight On the driver side of the vehicle, should I say the passenger side of the vehicle, you've got your external gas point. So there's a quick re release connector here, so you need to chop that off, pop that in the bottom, and then you need to get some orange gas hose and, and some Jubilee clips to connect it to your Kadak external barbecue on and heater, and then turn the bottle on and off. So you turn the pigtail on and off, and that'll come from the bottle on the other side of the vehicle so that you're not carrying a spare bottle so you've got a gas supply on the outside of the van. Here you have your cassette toilet. So to get the cassette out simply lift the blue lever, slide the cassette out and either carry it or you can drag it to your waste disposal site and then to empty all you need to do is remove the blue cap Press the button, tip the content of the cassette out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap beside your toilet disposal point. Put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again, 
and then you put a cap full of chemical which is 120 mil of either the green or the blue into here so you can either do it with it, measuring it with the cap or you can do it by eye pour it down there and then put it back into the vehicle and it's good to be used your habitation door works on the central locking so you'd open the top opens a cab the middle locks all three doors and the bottom one just opens the back door you've got a diesel filler here which is a capless system so you can pop the diesel filler into there and it'll fill with diesel fuel and then underneath it does take add blue so this is a 20 litre tank on a transit and it'll do five and a half thousand mile off a full tank but after you've done around four thousand mile with a 1500 miles to go you'll get a warning saying add blue low it'll give you a mileage countdown so it'll say a range of around a thousand mile if you top it up as soon as you can which you can buy it on the pump it's about 150 a litre or you can buy it in the drums and fill it up at home or keep one in the back of the garage on this model you can top it up just as soon as the light comes on otherwise if you're allowed to go low or too low you can go in the limp mode or fail to start but that's the adblue system which just cleans your catalytic converter out at a certain temperature to keep the emissions of the van nice and clean underneath here you don't have anything so you can turn your seats via this lever here so pull the seat forward little lever above and that'll turn the seat in the back both driver and passenger obviously underneath the driver's seat is where the engine battery lives on the folds and then to get into the engine bay you need to use the key in the pop it in above the Ford badge, turn it to the left to pop the bonnet, turn it to the right to release the bonnet. And then you do have your screen wash, which is the main one you're going to need, your engine oil filler, and your dipstick, your brake fluid, your earth for giving us receiving a jump start, you'd earth off the engine hoist there, and then you'd put your positive on, onto here. And you've got your coolant, three and a half ton gross vehicle weight with a ton tone weight if you did want to put a tow bar on and tow and then you've got front and back axle weights. So to operate your control panel, obviously it will be just 12 volt if you weren't hooked up. If you are hooked up it will come up with leisure battery charging which gives you an idea that you're receiving 230 volt. So in the top left You've got the on off button which turns the vehicle on and off, obviously 12 volt if you're not hooked up, 230 volt if you are and it'll still turn on your 12 volt as well. And then underneath you've got the master switch for the lights. So the lights are all individually switched with the switches located around the van but you need to have this button on to give the power to the switch, meaning the master switch for your lights then they all are switched around. Pump. So you need to turn the pump on should you have enough water in the fresh water tank you can turn the pump on and then that'll send water to the taps, toilet and shower. Awning light on the outside of the van and then if you press this button you can go through the various menus so it tells you sergeant unit, your leisure battery voltage, your vehicle battery voltage, your fresh and your waste water voltage there as well. So to operate your heating and hot water, next to your control panel, you do have your wheel heat air controls. So all you need to do is wave your hand over the front of them and the motion sensitive. So you've got your heating and your hot water one. So starting with the heating, plus and the minus is the temperature. The first snowflake is frost control. So frost control keeps the temperature above five degrees and the next one you've got nighttime mode which is the moon which is approximately 15 degrees and then you can go right the way around and adjust your temperature all the way to 30 degrees you've got gas here so if you want to operate your heating on gas if you're a wild camping you just select gas give it a couple of minutes when it 
It's blue, it's on standby. When that goes to orange, the gas is lit and it's working on gas. And then you've got electric here, so three little dots. So 750 watts being the first dot. And you can see that's gone to orange there, which means it is working on electric. Two dots is 1500 watts of electric. And then three dots is three kilowatts depending on what the site amperage gives you through your hookup lead will determine whether you use one 750 watts two 1500 watts or three three kilowatts on the electric but if you've paid your site fees you won't want to waste your gas you'll want to use their electric as much as possible and then this side you've got your water so again frost control start which is approximately five degrees and then you've got 40 degrees of heating your water or 60 degrees of heating your water. Gas. Three settings on the electric, 750 watts, 1500 watts and 3 kilowatts on there. So you just press and hold and they'll illuminate. And then you've got two reset buttons on the bottom. So should you get a exclamation mark, you can press and hold and reset the system. So each individual system has one. So water has one and heating and you can restart it and then reset the panel. To operate your fridge, which is a Fetford fridge, so you turn on and off here. That's it off. There's an hold and you can turn it back on. E stands for automatic energy selection and you can see that the picture of the plug is illuminated, which means it is a it's running on 230 volts, so it's working as a household fridge as it's connected to mains power, the vehicle. What automatic will do is, it'll look for the best source available. So it knows that we've got gas on board, but it knows we're hooked up. So it's went to 230 first. If I was to take the hookup out, it would switch over to gas by itself. And then if I was to start the vehicle's battery, so start the engine, the vehicle battery will send a 12 volt feed to the fridge and it'll go on the battery setting which is just designed to keep the fridge at the same temperature it was at when departing so you've got a pre-chiller beforehand if you're leaving so a couple of days before hook it up the night before put your shopping in obviously your fridge will all be down to temperature anyway once you put your shopping in then allow your shopping to chill and then on automatic it'll automatically switch over when you start the engine should you want to manually change the source of the fridge all you need to do is press and hold the square button and wait for it to start to flash. And then you can move it along the sources. So there's mains on its own. There's 12 volt when the battery's, when the engine's running off the, off the engine battery, not the leisure battery. And there's gas. And then you select, select your temperature. So always have it on full blast when pre-chilling. Knock it down to two or three when you put your shopping in just so it doesn't freeze your fridge. And there's your large, large fridge there with freezer box. When you have finished using the fridge, if you do just take everything out, give it a quick wipe out. And then the last thing you want to do is shut the door because it does form an airtight seal on the rubber seal. So what you do need to do is just pop this blue clip in, in the middle, rest the door upon the, upon the hinge there and it will not shut and it will allow air circulation in and out of the fridge. In the kitchen area, you do have a three gas burner hob with built-in ignition. So all you need to do is press down and the ignite that's built in. So there you have three lit gas rings. Allow these to cool until they're cool enough to put your hand upon until you put the glass lid down. That's when you know it's cold enough for the glass lid to go down and not be shattered by the heat and then underneath you do have your oven and grill so there's your grill away keep a hold of it until the thermocouple gets warm and then you can let go and the gas coupling will stay open That is your grill, and then underneath you do have your oven. 
You may want to take your grill pan and oven shelves out when traveling or wrap them up as they can cause a little bit of vibration when on the road. And underneath you've got a little bit of storage at the top but you've got three gas shut off valves. So you've got the barbecue point, the water heater and the boiler. So any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe. These are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced. And then just behind it underneath the cooker I should say underneath the fridge you do have another three gas taps so therefore the hob oven and the fridge so turn the bottle off if you if you think that there's a problem with gas these are mainly for when it's annually serviced just to check that the gas is working to the right standards you've got storage in here with a slide out cutlery tray so you can put all your cutlery on there and just slide it underneath the sink. Storage above the kitchen area. So you do have your te tele aerial here. So just leave it on. It'll go on and off with the control panel, main control panel. But if you're struggling for a signal, you can use the black wheel and you can boost the signal or drop it down just in case the picture is pixelating you can get the perfect picture there as it's a fixed aerial and then you've got a little switch here which is for your solar panel charge selector so at present at the top it's going to the vehicle battery and then at the bottom it's going to the leisure battery and in the middle it's off so you can choose which battery you want the charge from the solar panel to go to to which battery on the vehicle so if it was parked up you may want it to go to the engine battery but if you're using it, you may want it to go at the leisure battery. It's entirely up to yourselves. At the back of the vehicle, you've got your twin single beds. Or you can make it a double by putting this board in. So this board just sits in here. Rests upon the two there. Two little notches on either side. And you can create a double bed across the width of the van. Or you can just have it as two singles with the hop up step in the middle, which is storage for your bits and pieces. You've got storage in here and storage underneath the other side of the bed as well. So storage either side, obviously a garage runs underneath the back. Two 12 volt charging points for your phones and your devices. Two individual locker cabinets and then two reading lights on either side of the van which are individually switched. Followed by a TV point, so you've got a TV point here, so it's 12 volt TV aerial and 230 volt. You will just need a TV bracket of some sort to connect on here if you want the TV in the rear of the Tribute F70. In the washroom, you've got a large separate shower cubicle. So in your shower cubicle, obviously your shower doors are tied back when traveling with this turnbuckle. So just turn that the other way and you can use your full shower screen. That'll come over and clip on. But make sure that that is tied back before you do start driving. And then one thing with your shower head, when winterizing the vehicle, when you want to drain all the water out of it, of the vehicle and open all your taps you also want to unscrew your shower head from your hose because look at how the shower hose sits any water could coil up here put the shower hose into the shower tray with the mixer tap open here you have your hand basin tap working and that's your water getting really warm there so your boiler is working as it should but use this plug you just push it in push it out toilet cabinet and then you've got another one underneath the sink but to operate the toilet that blue button on the back is your flush button so you can adjust the seat to wherever you want it to go so it does spin so you press the blue button, which will give you a flush. 
and always put a little bit of water in the toilet before you use it because it lubricates the seal between the top of the toilet and the top of the cassette. Then you want to open the blade which is the flap between the two. So at the present you can't get into the cassette. You want to open the blade which is this handle here so slide it to the right. You've opened the hatch there. You can now use the toilet. Everything is going to go into the cassette. And then after you've finished using the toilet, just give it a big flush. And then you want to close the blade, which is sliding it back to the left. That means when the cassette indicates that it's full, which it will down here, you see the little green? That'll start to slowly go red until it goes to solid red, which means the cassette's full. You can get the cassette out the side of the van. If the blade was to be open, you can't get it out because the mechanism's engaged. It's physically got the handle of the cassette open, so it can't come out. It needs to be shut, and then the cassette will slide out the side of the van, and you can take it to your toilet block where your disposal point is and empty your cassette. So if you if you take the cushions off the bench seat behind the driver's seat and remove the panel, so there's one panel that goes in there but you've got storage underneath here you've got your main fuse spur for your hot water system on electric so if you ever need to isolate that you can just press the switch there and turn it off but make sure that you haven't caught it when you've been loading things in by accident and you're wondering why you can't get the three dots on the water heater to work for the electric side and then underneath this one you do have your power supply unit so if you just release these clips which slides this forward which you'll need to have off anyway to make your bed you can gain access so this is your EC 176 power supply unit so you've got a 12 volt system shutdown button which is an isolator for your leisure battery here this black button so you might want to press that in the winter but I think when you press them it turns off your head unit which is the excellent head unit in the cab which will then turn off all your reversing camera your radio and everything so you may have to have that on if you're going to take the van out for a drive you've got all your fuses here so these are all standard blade fuses, which are listed what does what on here. So carry some spare standard fuses with you, which you can get from most car factor places, just to replenish the fuse. And then this side, you've got your main RCD and your MCBs for the various different things, which are listed what does what. So if you've tripped something out, try here before you do try your site. And then on the opposite side in the corner, You've got a yellow handle just here. This is your wheel boiler drain down tap. So in the winter when you're not using the van and we're experiencing colder temperatures, that 10 litres of water sits in that boiler. You don't want that water to freeze because if it does freeze, unfortunately, it's not covered under warranty and it's probably a new boiler job. So, what you need to do is, you need to turn it the other way. Turn it the front, point it to the front of the cab. It'll drain off all the 10 litres directly out underneath the van. Leave it pointing to the front until you're ready to reuse the vehicle. Once you're ready to reuse it, then you would turn it back across the van, so it's pointing towards the habitation door. And then, you shut all your taps, You'd shut your fresh and your waste outside because you'll have opened them, you'll have drained all the water out of the van. Then what you want to do is fill it up. So the fill up point is just here on the other side of the van. So you'd fill it up with cold water via a hose pipe. And then what you want to do is you want to put your pump on and you want to, well, you want to put your control panel on first, then turn your pump on. And then you want to go to your cold side of your tap first. Go into the cold side first you'll get a pressurised flow of water. If you go to the hot side, it'll start coughing and spluttering, and what it's doing is it's transferring the water from the fresh water tank underneath the van into the boiler via the pump of 10 litres until it starts coming out your taps. So do just wait until you get a free flow of water 
and then you know that your system is then primed. So to make the lounge into a bed, so I've just removed the cushions there to show you. So what you need to do is, you need to undo these Prestud clips. So one there, one there, undo them, slide this forward as far as you can slide it forward. And then if you just lift this hatch, there's a leg. Push the leg down, so it supports it. Put the, put the panel back in without dropping it through the hatch, like that. Take this set down, the backboard. And that's gonna sit like that, in there. And then the same for the other side. Lift the hatch, slide the leg down, back panel into here, base cushion forward, back rest into here. Same with this one, so back, large backrest in the back there. Base cushion. Into here. And there you have your front bed makeup. Obviously feet at this end, heads at this end as it's wider, this side of the vehicle. So in the cab, to the right of the driver is your handbrake, which is a foldable handbrake. So when you push it, when you're putting the handbrake on, you'll hear it ratchet up, and then you drop it, and obviously it comes off. But it does always fold back down, so it allows the cab driver seat to spin round. Otherwise, if that was stuck up, the seat wouldn't be able to spin. You've got your electric windows. Locks the doors on an evening, so all three, including the habitation door. So two cab habitation door, just make sure all your other individual lockers are individually locked. And then you do have Remus cab lines fitted to the vehicle's front windscreen and side windows. So pinch, slide it out. That'll black out the passenger and driver's doors. You've got your mirror adjustment here, so you can adjust the top mirror being the big mirror. The blind spot mirror is manually adjustable, mm. so you need to just adjust that by popping your hand out the window and getting that to where you need it to be. Automatic headlights, so just leave them on automatic, and then the sensor will pick up when it gets dark and put your headlights on. But if not, you can put them on and turn them off with the headlight adjustment in the middle. And then when the headlights are on, you can adjust the temperature, adjust the temperature, adjust the brightness of your clocks, so your instrument cluster. So if they're too bright, you can dull it down, or if they're too dull, you can brighten it up. You've got your front and back rear fog lights, wipers, indicators, and your high beam light there. And then on here, you do have your controls to go through the screen so you can go from a digital speedometer to how many seat belts are fastened on the vehicle to how many miles you've covered to your average fuel usage to how many miles are left in your fuel tank to your instant fuel usage and then you go to your settings and you can reset your computer there and you go to your maintenance and view your AdBlue range you've got 4,000 miles in your AdBlue and you see the level there, so the min, the max refill it will take is 6.6 .6 litres, the minimum refill it will take is 5 litres. And there's your add blue level. 
and you can view your oil life at the top. That's all through there. Here you have your controls for your cruise control and speed limiter. So limiter is the speed limiter and then you'd set it. So you press limb, it'll say limb set miles per hour and then you can just push up or push and hold and it goes up in fives and, it'll, and you can see at the top what it's set to. Or you can go to cruise control and you can set that but obviously you need to be at speed and then you would just push it up to set the cruise control. You can cancel and resume the speed limit out of cruise control by clicking cancel and resume. You've got your volume and mute, a voice command and answer and decline a call or skip a track on the bottom of the left right hand side of the steering wheel. This one is the automatic from Ford, which is the Power Touch Auto. It does come as standard as a manual, but the, the, this one has been opted as an automatic. So it, you can just go straight down to drive and it'll learn how you drive. So if you accelerate quick, it'll change gear quick. Or if you just take your time, obviously it'll hold the gear longer, but the Power Touch does learn how you drive. And then if you are struggling, you've got the thumb switch there, so you've got a plus and a minus, so you can go up and down your gears. Into reverse, which will bring on your rear view camera there on your head unit, on your XN head unit, which I'll go through in a second. But you do have your mode, so what your mode does, it goes through normal and eco. What I've been told about the mode button is, if you get up to speed and once you're finished getting up to speed so you're sitting on the motorway at 65 mile an hour 75 70 mile an hour put it in the eco it will use less fuel over so it'll not use less fuel massively but over the time that it takes so over the time of the year and how much fuel you've put in the tank you'll have saved some fuel by using it but when you come to wanting to pull away overtake or get up to speed quicker just knock it back into normal because then it gives you full power off the engine you've got your traction control here so if you were struggling on wet grass or gravel you can turn it off and it stops the wheels from spinning you can then use the throttle a little bit more without the ESP kicking in hazards USB and 12 volt fan speed on or off here for the air conditioning temperature of the cab heated mirrors screen face feet or you've got the bottom one which is a heated windscreen with a bean of Ford aircon and recirculation and then finally you've got your temperature here so you can adjust the temperature to suit above to operate your accent head unit so if you go to the home screen, you've got a little chip in the side here for the sat nav, for the maps, and you can go to navigation, and you can view a map of where the vehicle is currently at. But should you want to select a destination, you need to hit the bottom corner, new route, address, and then in the middle bar where it says town or postcode, you would knock the postcode into there. So punch your postcode in, press go to town, it'll give you an overview of how many miles it's going to take you and the distance and the time. So you just press select navigation, it'll start the navigation to that postcode that you've popped in. And then once you've been anywhere, it'll be down here so you can quickly go to your history and see where you've been. Or if you need to go there again, you can punch it back in. Radio is just FM, AM, but you will use DAB most of the time. So you can press presets and save six of your favorite stations on DAB. Or you can go to list and view all the individual folders. So you've got your regional, your um, national, your BBC national. So you can go in and find the station that you want and save it on your presets. Bluetooth. Click on Bluetooth. You want to find on your phone XN. So you want to be searching for this head unit when that head unit searching for your phone and it'll come up with your phone in here so it might come up with Callum's iPhone and you can press pair and then you want to pair on your phone and then it'll ask you if you want to allow your contacts to be saved just press allow and then whoever rings it will come up with a name if they're saving your phone book instead of just a number and then you can press the music icon once you've connected your phone for Bluetooth audio 
you've got a USB and an iPod which works off that USB there and then you've got your camera so you can have your camera on all the time when you're moving forward by pressing camera so you can always see out the back of the van as you don't really have a rear view mirror on a motorhome but you can see on this and you've got the shortcuts at the bottom for those and then should you ever need to update this unit which you just go on the Accent website uh, Accent updates and you want to find it XF280 that's the unit of this head unit which is here the model number go to setup download the update on the memory stick pop the memory stick in the front here and go to other and just press install software and that will download the software off that memory stick into the head unit so it will update itself it will cure any glitches, it will cure any freezing or anything that it's doing um, and it will make it run quicker than what it's running if you think it's running quite slow because sometimes when they do go slow it's just time for an update